What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I am here with brand new MVP, Tomasz Pozitek. Did I say that right? Well, mostly, most correctly, it's Pozitek. Pozitek. All right, all right. See, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. Welcome to the Good channel, man. How are you doing? I'm, I'm really fine. Like, I'm currently at the ESPC conference in Prague, and although I don't have my own sessions, uh, I'm I'm performing as an expert at the as the experts area, and like I did already get three hours of Q and A's around Power Platform, around patterns, around processes, about licensing, which is really odd because like seventy percent of all questions were about the pro about the licensing. Oh my god! People gosh. just don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a question: who who let you be an expert? Uh, <laughs> that's a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> that is a trick question. I'm messing with you, man. So, so for those of you guys that don't know Tomash, uh, Tomash recently got MVP. He has been killing it in Power Platform for the last year. Apps, a lot of flow, a lot of office. Uh, and, and lately, uh, he's been known for doing adaptive card stuff all over the place. So if you want to know more about adaptive cards, definitely check out some of the links below that I'll have for Tomash. So enough about him. Uh, today, what he's going to be doing with us is he's going to show us a bit about how to use Power Virtual Agents. I recently ha have done a video on Power Virtual Agents, a true introduction. And so Tomash here will take Power Virtual Agents a little bit further than that. So uh, enough from me. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you, Tomash. Introduce yourself, kind of let people know where they can connect with you, and then feel free to take it away, man. All right. So um, as John said, I'm a proud MVP. I was awarded last month and I'm specializing in business applications. So the Power Platform is the thing I'm really working with every day. And yep, so I have an experience with processes for over like four years, even five, I think. Uh, not only with Power Platform, with Power Automate, but as well the third party processes and SharePoint designer processes. And that's actually enough about me. So. Um, if you want to learn more about what I'm doing, what I'm working on, feel free to follow me on my Twitter as well. Look up my blog post where I'm really trying to cover a lot of complex scenarios and complex topics that, that my customers are the, the, the true inspiration. Uh, yep. So there are the links. Awesome. Fine. So let's jump over to, yeah, to the concept. So right. for those. For those of you who are not yet familiar with what John recorded about Power Virtual Agent, this product uh, was announced like for the first time um, uh, after, I mean, during the Microsoft Business Application Summit this year. However, back then it was missing one crucial functionality. So the user was totally anonymous and there was no way back then to anyhow authenticate a user to get user context and so on. So like people were doing some walkarounds, for example, bots were asking for user email and other confidential information so that they were able somehow to um, get this, this user context and then use it uh, to get, for example, users manager. Got However, it. they were not really able to get the bearer token and to like trigger actions in the context of the user. So okay. uh, after the Ignite, the Power Virtual Agents, I mean, the Virtual Agents were renamed into Power Virtual Agents. And in the December release, uh, this tool was equipped with a new feature, it's called Authentication. So the Authentication basically is um, the way that you can configure your bot to be able to authenticate user using any, actually any um, identity provider that is uh, compliant with the OAuth 2.0 uh nice protocol yeah so i mean in our case we have a power platform that's obviously the azure ad so if you want to equip your bot with this cool new feature you have to configure this form it doesn't look easy for the first shot but there is this hyperlink here uh to learn about the configuring authentication and it basically guides you to documentation that clearly tells you what you should put in each field. Also, nice. on my blog post, there is a description on how to, how to do it. However, um, there below, there is a table describing each property and is providing you with example values 
per each field that is proper if you want to configure it against Azure AD. Nice. Okay? So here you can get these values. Now, another thing that you have to keep in mind is that this configuration requires you to get the client ID and client secret. So obviously you have to create new, I mean, you have to register a new application in Azure ID. Mm -hmm. um, so like once you create new application, here you have the client ID. So that's the first value. And then you also have to go to um, certificates and secrets to generate the client secret. But that's not it because you have also to grant your application proper permissions. So speaking about the permissions, you have to go to the permissions blade. And there are like two that are required. The first one is the open ID that is um, required to get user um, like this confirmation token. Mm -hmm. And then the user, then the user read, which is required for uh, getting the bearer token. And then, of course, you can get, I mean, you can grant the other permissions like I did in this scenario to the user read also that later, once you get the bearer token and you get, and you will be able to, for example, call Microsoft Graph API using this context of the user. Yeah. So uh, let me, then, then, let me jump in real quick, just so people who don't understand what you're talking about with the tokens. Uh, basically, what Tamash is trying to do here is give permissions to the bot so that it can not only sign in as the user, it acquires a login token, but then it also acquires this bearer token. And what that means is that's the token that allows that account to do things. And so essentially what he's trying to do here is give permission to the bot to sign you in and to do things on your behalf. Well, basically, it will grant the bot permissions to generate to generate the bearer token that later you can pass, for example, to Power Automate, and then to use uh, on behalf of the user who is authenticated. So that is about the permissions. And last thing that is really important here as well is that once you go to authentication blade, you have to define this redirect URI. It has to be that one precisely that one. And the information about that is also written here in the documentation, highlighted under the important um, nice. box, whatever. So that's the, that's the value you have to copy and to use as the redirect URI. Uh, and that completes the configuration of the, of the app registration. So okay. with that said, you have now the client secret and client ID and you can use it. Now let me show you in action how it actually works. Ah, but before that, just a short, just a short information about the bots and how they really work. So the main thing about the Power Virtual Agent is that that's a tool that is basically dedicated to all the citizen developers and power users so that they're able to create conversational bots without actually knowing how to program them because it gives you the interface that I will show you in a, in a while to create a conversation as you would be creating a power automate. So you don't actually need to know as Visual Studio. You don't have to know how to program in C -sharp or whatever else language. You just have to know what kind of conversation you'd like to have. And so speaking about that, the conversation is just a topic. And then each topic is basically a set of trigger phrases. So the words, the sentences, the, the keywords, that if user types in, in, the, in the message box, they trigger a specific conversation in a bot. But then speaking about these conversations, it's not that um, this conversation is always going from top to bottom, so from the trigger to the end of the conversation, but Providual Agent is able to fluently switch between those topics. So for example, if, if you post a question or if you post an answer that this specific conversation is like not able to handle, then it will fluently switch to another topic that is able to like handle this kind of exception and for example to escalate you to a human agent hmm. so this this, this uh, switching between topics is really fluent and user just can't see it once they once they interact with, with the bot so speaking about this uh, authoring uh, about the conversation there is this authoring canvas that actually looks a little bit like a power automate that even has this topic checker. Wow. Like, like flow checker, right? Yeah, that <laughs> looks like a flow to me. Yeah, so like 
then in every like in, in each step basically when you hit this plus button you can choose like one of the actions that are available so you can ask a question to the user and then wait for the response uh, and then the response you can use like a, like a condition for for the conditional branch uh, you can also show a message so that's just uh, a single a single text i mean with, with no interaction uh, if that's the end of the conversation, you can actually just go to another topic. So to switch to another topic or end conversation with, uh, with one of the outcomes. Um, and there is also this call and action feature. And that's the most powerful thing about the Power Tool agent because it allows you not only to call a Power Automate that will just do a lot of fancy stuff, but it also gives you this authenticate feature. So nice. once you have the authentication configured, you can just use it in your in your flow of conversation uh, to prompt user to authenticate. Nice. All right. So let us let us see how it works. So that's that's the beginning of the of the conversation. So I'll ask my bot uh, like show me my data. So that's the conversation box. And now you'll be you'll be able to see here on the on the right side on the canvas that the conversation as it flows is being highlighted in green so that it, when I'm testing it, I can clearly see where the bot is actually uh, in, the, in the conversation flow. So now once I click login, if I weren't logged in at this moment, because you can embed uh, your, your bot in anonymous website, then I will be prompted in this case to provide my password, my, my login and my password for uh, Azure ID account. But as I'm logged in already, I will just be showed this authentication code. So that's this validation code. And now I have to copy it, paste it in the conversation window. And this way bot can um, generate a bearer token that is then being passed as a parameter to my Power Automate that is actually getting now the data from uh, from Graph API and from CDS. So it got information about who am I, who is my manager, and what's their email, and what is my CDS ID, so what is my user uh, CDS ID. Nice. So with that, uh, with, with that, you can actually like reach to um, CRM data, get users, uh, you know, contracts, invoices, data from, from the CDS that is related to the customer, whatever you want that gives you the whole context of this authenticated user. So now I just want to show you briefly how you can create a flow. Sorry, Power Automate. <laughs> no, no, it's still a flow. In Power oh, Automate, we still make flows. All right, let's, let's stick to that. So there are like two things you have to keep in mind when you want to create a flow for a uh, Power Virtual Agent. So first thing is that all these Power Automates have to be put in a solution. So they cannot be just anywhere in your environment. They have to be in a solution. And then the second thing is that it has to be triggered by the HTTP request. And having that said, you know what I mean? That's a premium feature. Mm -hmm. So at this, at this point, if you really want to equip or extend your Power Automate with, uh, sorry, your Power Virtual Agent with Power Automate flows, you actually have to have a license. And speaking of that, possibly the company-wide Superflow license. Anyway, once you create a trigger, so in this case, that's just an action that requests or waits for the bearer token. What I'm doing next is I'm actually using this bearer token to call Graph API and pro I'm providing it as as my token, so therefore this call to Graph API is actually within the context of the user who was logged in in, uh, in, the, in the conversation. Nice. The next step is I'm again using this bearer token to call Graph API to get my manager, and I'm providing already an email that I was returned from the previous call, so from the context of the user. And lastly, what I'm doing is I'm just calling the CDS, the entity users, to get all the information that is relevant to user whose internal email address is the one I obtained from the user context. Nice. Yep. And then in the end, I'm just constructing this small compose message that is in the end being returned as a response. Sweet. Yep. 
And that's it. That's basically it. So that is the response that is being saved into the variable that in the end I'm showing here. So now if I have, a, I mean, if I make this small preview of variables, that is what has been returned by the Power Automate back to the Power Virtual Agent once I was authenticated. Wow, and look so at how it reads it right that's, there. That's, that's a that nice. That is cool. That is cool, yeah. That is so cool, man. This is super cool. And I love how you can authenticate the experience now. That kind of, that really takes it to a whole other level instead of having yes. to like trust that someone is honestly reporting who they are. Yes, like before that, I was doing like a workaround. So I was first asking user for their email. And then I was asking user for their, for their um, mail nickname because I thought that's the most... Uh, confidential information I was able to find in Azure AD profiles. And so after having an email and confirming that the nickname they provided is the same as stored in Azure AD, I said, um, the bot was saying, okay, I authenticated you. But that was obviously not the very good approach. And with that kind of authentication, it's really all of 2.0. So it's really secure. And if you're using Azure AD as the authentication provider, and you have also this two-factor authentication that on, then obviously you also have to uh, provide your second factor. So either this application, yeah. uh, this is um, talking about application or SMS, whatever, but it's really secure. <clears throat> Sweet, man. That is so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, Tomash, I really appreciate you stepping away from ESPC to come hang out and teach us about this. I think uh, a lot of people get a lot of use out of this. And uh, so I really appreciate you spending some time here this morning. All right. I mean, it's morning at <laughs> your time zone, but actually it's already an afternoon in my time zone. That's right. You're right. Yes. So now I should stop interrupting you so that you can go and drink <laughs> beer. Um, well, that's the plan for the next hours, actually. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Well, hey, you guys. Make sure and get subscribed to Tamash. I have his links down below, his Twitter, his blog. And let's uh, go ahead and leave some comments. Let him know what you thought of the video. And uh, let's get him back on the channel to show us some more stuff. Tamash, thanks so much, man. Yes, thank you very much, John. It was a pleasure to present it to you and to you all. Thank you. Awesome. All right, guys, you know what to do. Click like, click subscribe. Much love from me. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.